Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to generate the identity column in data flow for multiple files using SSIS. So recently I had created a video like how to generate the auto increment column in data flow using SSIS. So I got a comment on the same video that how would you use the same auto increment column when we have data in the multiple source files. So we should continue the identity value from the first file onto the next one without resetting the value. So suppose if I have multiple files then the auto increment column the identity column value that value should be auto incremented that should be merged with the previous file and it should not be reset. So let's see how we can do that using SSIS. So let's jump to the demo and I will share the link of my previous video. So in case if you just want to do it for one single file then you can do that as well. So in the D files location I got two CSV files. The first file is the customer 1.csv and the second file is the customer 2.csv. So if I open the first file so it contains 1000 records okay and the file is pipe delimited file so all the columns are separated by a pipe. So it contains 1000 records okay and then if I show you the second file customer 2.txt so this particular file contains 100 records okay so if I combine both the counts, so it will be around 1100 records. Okay. So the value in the identity column, it should start from the value as 1 and it should go up to 1100. So let's see how we can do that. So let me close this one. So this is my blank SSIS package that I will be using today. And because we need to import multiple CSV files, so we can use a for each loop container here. So what I can do, I can just drag and drop the for each loop container into the control flow window. And then I can create an SSIS variable here. The first variable I will create as file path. Okay. And uh, the data type will be a string. And I can give an initial value to the file path. So maybe I can provide value as like customer1.csv. So I can paste the value here. Now let me configure the for each loop container. From the collection, from enumerator type, I will select for each file enumerator and then I can browse the location from where we need to import the data. So the files are situated at D files location and I want to import all the CSV files. So I can put a value start.csv. Now I can go to the variable mapping from the variable I can select the file path variable and then I can click on OK. Now because we want to import the data so I can use a data flow task here and in the data flow task we can write the code to import the data from the CSV files to the SQL server table. Now I can configure the data flow task because our source is a CSV file so I can just drag and drop the flat file source into the data flow task and then I can configure the flat file source here. Click new to create a new flat file connection manager and then I can browse the source file. From the file type I will select CSV file, I will select the file, click open. If I click on the preview so I can see the data, so data seems good here, I can click on ok, ok. Now I want to add a new column into the data flow and I, maybe I can call the column as rn okay and because we need to increment the value of the column so maybe we can use the script task to do that so let me just drag and drop the script task into the control flow window it will be used as a transformation so I can click on ok now I can connect the flat file source with the script component and I can configure the script component I need to click on input and outputs I can expand the outputs and from the output columns I can click on add column so that I can add a new column here and the new column will be called as rn and if you check the data type so the data type is 4 byte sign integer so which is perfectly fine to hold the some numeric value so now I can go back to the script and I can click on edit script so that the script editor window can be opened up and I can write my code there alright so this is opened so here I can write the code at process input row but before writing the code here uh, what I can do, I can just declare an int variable here, int i equal to 0, okay. And then what I can do, I can just set the value of rn, row dot rn equal to i plus 1 and then I can increase the value of i with i plus 1, i equal to i plus 1. So this is the just three lines of code which can actually uh, generate and assign the value to a auto increment column rn ok now I can click on file exit I can click on ok now because we need to insert the data to a SQL server table so we can use an OLEDB destination here and I can connect the script component with the OLEDB destination I can right click click edit click new so we can make a connection we already have a connection to the test database so I can select this connection and I can click on ok 
From data access mode, I can select table or view fast load and then I can click new to create a new table here. I can call my table as test and now you can see a new column here rn of type integer and this rn column will hold the new identity value that is generated from the data flow task. Now I can click on ok and then I can click on mappings to make sure that all input columns have been mapped with the destination columns and then I can click on ok. Okay, so now we need to make the flat file connection manager dynamic. So I need to right click on it and go to the properties and from here we need to go to the expressions and we need to set the connection string property from the SSIS variable file path. So I can just drag and drop it and I can click on evaluate expression, click OK, OK. So now what will happen that when for each loop container will run, it will get the latest value of the CSV file and that value will be assigned to the file path and then for each file the flat file connection manager will change to that particular file. So if I execute the SSIS package now then it will generate the identity value rn but it will be reset for every file that it will load. Okay. So for example right now I ran the package and it has loaded the data from two CSV files and total 1100 records should be imported but if you will check the data for the rn column then you will see First it loaded 1000 records so the rn value should be from 1 to till 1000 and for the second file which contains the 100 records the value might be resetted. So it will restart from 1 to 100. So let me open the test table and see how the data looks like. So I can write a new query here and I can write a query select star from test. Okay so this contains the data. So this rn column this is a new column that was generated from the data flow task inside the SSIS package. And if you check the data here, if you check the values, so the values starts from 1 and they goes up to 1000, okay. And there are total 1100 records in this particular file. So if I sort the data on the RN, then let's see how the data looks like order by RN, okay. So you can see the duplicate data here, like uh, 1, 1 is duplicated, 2, 2 is duplicated, okay. So I think the first 100 record, they should be duplicated. Yeah, so that's why after loading with the first file 1000 records, it restarted the value for the second file like from 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. But what we want is that uh, the RN value should not be restarted and if we imported first file which contains 1000 records, then when the second file will be imported, the value of the RN should continue like after 1000, it should be like 1001, 1002, 1003. So the value should not be reset. So let's see how we can do that. So for that particular thing what we need to do is that we need to declare two SSIS variables here integer variable and for the first variable it will hold the row count for one file and then after the data flow task what we can do we can merge the row count from one file to another file okay. So after executing one data flow task the total number of records will be kept inside an SSIS variable and then that value will be merge to the total number of records loaded so far variable okay so after loading the second file we will add the total number of records loaded by second file with the total number of records added by the first file we will just add the count so that we know how many records have been loaded so far so that we can continue the identity column value okay so let's see how we can do that so let me just declare two variables here the first variable i will call it as row count okay and it will be of type integer and the second variable I will add is total row count okay. So the row count will hold the number of records loaded from one file while the total row count will hold the number of records loaded from all files okay. So let me close this one and let me open the data flow task. After the script component we will add a row count transformation because the row count transformation can actually get the total number of records loaded from a flat file. So I can just connect the script component with the row count and then I can select the row count. I can click on OK and then I can connect the row count transformation with the OLEDB destination and after that I can just drag and drop the execute SQL task here and I can connect the data flow task with the execute SQL task and I will call this particular task as uh, get the total number of records loaded okay and then I can right click and configure this one I will select the connection the test connection 
and then I will go to the expressions and from expressions I will select the SQL statement source and here I will write a query okay so what I will write I will write declare at the rate cnt int set cnt equal to uh, total number of records from the row count so I will just drag and drop the row count variable here and uh, I will actually combine the uh, row count variable plus the total row count variable so I will add double quote plus plus double quote plus and then between the two plus sign I will add the total row count so we will combine total row count with the row count okay and then we will select this cnt from here and then we'll assign this value to the total row count okay so this way in the total row count we will get the actual value and now because the total row count and the row count they are of type integer so we need to typecast them to the string here so i can just write dt underscore wstr comma 12 and similarly i can copy this one and i can paste it here okay and then i can click on evaluate expression so this worked fine now i can click on okay okay now i can go to the general and from the result set i will select the single row because a single value will be returned from this particular query and i can go to the result set click add i will change the result set name to zero and from the variable i will select the total row count variable now i can click on okay now what we need to do we need to use this variable total row count inside the script task so i will open the data flow task and i will right click on the script component and i can click on edit now from the read only variable i will select the total row count okay and uh, yeah and i can click on edit script so that the script editor can be open for me now what we need to do here is that these three lines of code that was already written but on the on pre-execute event what we need to write is that i equal to variables dot total row count okay so what we will do we will get the total row count and we will assign that value to the i so instead of restarting the value of i from zero on the on pre-execute event we will assign the value from the total row count variable okay so this way the value won't be reset so i can click on file exit and then i can click on ok now what i can do i can go back to the sql server and uh, I can just truncate this table for now truncate table test okay so the table is empty and now what I can do I can just rerun the SSIS package and now let's see if it reset the data or not so now you can see that both the files have been loaded and now if I check the data again so this time the data should not be reset and now the value should start from 1 and it should go up to 1000 and then after 1000 the value should be continued so you can see that now we don't have the rn value duplicate here and if i go to the end of this particular data then you can see that after 1000 now this value is again from the another file 1001 1002 so the data is not duplicate here and the value of the rn is not reset the value is continuing so if you will load the data from multiple file even from 2 3 4 5 file then the rn value will always be unique and it will be incremented and it won't be reset after the file load yeah, so i think that's what we wanted from this particular ssis package and i will share the script use in this particular ssis package so that you can test it in your environment and i will also share the uh, four lines of code that i written in the script component so that you can test it on your end yeah, so i think that's it for today's video Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button, do subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.